Today we're talking about connected television advertising and let's take a brief look at what connected television advertising actually is. It's the data infused version of television advertising uh, for 2020. If you're on a Roku or a Crackle or a Pluto TV or Tubi and you're watching a television or a movie on the internet uh, through one of these platforms or maybe Hulu or even YouTube, you're eligible to see an advertisement um, delivered to that big screen, the television screen in the household. And what makes this really interesting is that you're not just running a visual communication, an ad on the largest television in the household. You also have the ability to use data to inform who sees the ad and when they see the ad. So it's like running an ad on Facebook or Instagram or a banner ad and deploying it with data so that the person watching it is very precision targeted um, based on your targeting and your filtering criteria. So there's been some news coming out in the recent weeks about viewership on over the top or internet connected television and we're going to go through some statistics right now and so this is from and I'll put a link to this a, a, a trade desk um, uh, report called the time is now for connected TV um, it's a white paper and it goes into this statistic and the statistics this data comes from Comscore and Business Insider um, taken after the coronavirus or the COVID-19 um, quarantine and stay-at-home orders have been lifted, have been uh, started, I should say. Um, so data as of February, April, uh, and March of 2020. Tubi uh, has 25 million subscribers. Pluto TV has 24 million subscribers. Hulu has 30.7 million subscribers. Netflix, 183 million. And Disney Plus, 54 million subscribers. And this is big because it really shows that there is a lot of opportunity for advertisers as consumers shift towards this different type of uh, internet connected television. A different report um, talks about the difference between households in the United States, pay TV versus non-pay TV uh, media consumption. So pay TV is someone paying for cable, satellite, some sort of tech or fiber operators. Um, it does not include any like IPTV or pure play online services like Hulu, Netflix, and YouTube. So what this says is that in 2020, there are 44 million non-pay TV subscribers or households in the US, whereas in 2020, there are 82 million, almost 83 million um, pay TV households in the US. So you can argue almost twice as many people have pay TV as non-pay TV uh, in this in, in the US in 2020 but that number is going to uh, change dramatically as in 2023 72 million is going to drop from from 82 million or 83 million households to 72 million households that have pay TV and uh, 56 million households it's going to increase to 56 million households who have non-pay TV um, subscriptions so now when you look at when you break out data by household what what research shows is that 66 percent of 18 to 34 year olds um, are willing to stream a TV show and watch ads in that TV show if it lowers lowers their monthly subscription cost uh, for the age group of 55 plus where, where you would might expect a higher overall disposable income only 47 percent of this audience is willing to watch t advertising supported um, TV streaming content so what are the implications here for advertisers well there's a couple number one the time to go to market for internet connected television is actually just much lower it takes overall less time to create content and push it out to internet connected televisions and the targeting is much more robust right in, in television you're targeting broad audience and demographic segments 18 to 24 year old let's say in a specific dma but on um, internet connected television or over the top television you can target people who recently bought oreos on their mastercard and are also watching a roku and who are also 18 to 34 so you can get very dynamic and very specific with that really robust targeting um, certainly we can expect as people are going to want to cut costs 
um, on television service, they're more likely to um, cut internet or cut cable television costs and in favor um, get uh, ad supported television. And it's really valuable for advertisers looking to reach a really valuable 18 to 34 year old audience who may not be out and about anymore or spending more time with media and are, really don't have as many places to reach them at, with uh, cable television or broadcast television um, media. You certainly have other controls like the ability to tie back, and this is really interesting, tie back purchases on a website or a mobile app after they watched an ad on internet connected television, right? So it's the same targeting and the same tracking that you have with um, a banner ad or a Facebook ad. You place a pixel on a website, you connect it to a household identifier, and at the end of the day, I know that if I served an ad on Roku, I can identify the value that those people have brought me in terms of sales and leads generated off of that particular ad placement. And certainly there's other things like frequency control, um, but what's really interesting to me is the data targeting. So there you have it, some insights and details into internet connected television and the ability to run ads in that environment. All right guys, have a good day.